I actually never planned to go into computer science for a living. If you had told me growing up as a little girl that was going to be my career path, I would have really thought you'd lost your mind. Um, I was interested in biology because of the impact on human health, and I wanted to figure out how I could help cure different diseases, and I was really excited about that. I only got into computer science out of necessity. It was during my PhD that I started on a project that required capturing a lot of images on the microscope. Basically me sitting at the microscope for four hours a day, uh, incredibly tedious, incredibly boring, and I thought, well, this, this microscope comes with some software that allows you to program it. And I ended up creating this monster of a blob of code that allowed it to capture images and analyze them. That really got me hooked, seeing the power of being able to accelerate the biology biology was really enticing to me. I run a research lab here at the Broad Institute of Harvard and MIT, and what's really unusual about it is that we bring together people at the interface of two disciplines. So normally there's biologists and there's computer scientists, and we are right in between those two. It's a really cool place to be because it's uncharted territory, and the synergy of everyone coming together with their different ideas from different disciplines really helps to accelerate our research. So I got into this field because I wanted to develop new medicines, and it's an increasingly important problem as it's getting more and more expensive to find new medicines. And on top of that, humanity is finding more and more diseases that we need to cure. The standard way of identifying drugs is that you just study a disease for a couple of decades, try to figure out the mechanisms, there's so much that's unknown, and it's just incredibly painstaking. There is still a huge bottleneck in finding medicines for each disease. Instead of trying to study diseases in actual humans or even in model systems like a mouse or a rat, what if we could study the disorders in cells growing in a dish? They're super cheap, very easy to grow, and they don't mind if you add um, thousands of chemicals to them to try to figure out if one of them might make a good drug. So the approach that my lab is taking involves images. So we use microscopy, we use image analysis to see whether we can identify any unusual structures in the cells of humans that have particular disorders. We can treat those cells with different drugs and try to find are there any drugs that make the unhealthy looking cells look healthy again. One example of this basic approach is what we've done with patients who have various mental illnesses. And so what we thought is, well, let's uh, collaborate with someone here in the Boston area at McLean Hospital, gathering groups of patients that have very specific types of symptoms, and they've taken cells from those patients, skin cells, and grown them in a dish, and then we've looked at their structure. And we were really surprised to find that we could identify whether a patient has various illnesses that cause psychosis just by the structure of their cells. Really a shocking finding, um, but we were really excited to see that the mitochondria of the cell, the powerhouses of the cell, are not as not distributed as evenly as they usually are when, when patients have these different forms of psychosis. And this was an incredibly exciting result because it means we can now take cells that have this disordered looking mitochondria and test drugs one by one using just cells in a dish this field of image-based profiling. To see that field really blossom and develop over the past decade has been incredibly satisfying. So when a clinical trial comes out and our software has been used to identify a drug for it, there's nothing like that feeling. <laughs>